Hello and welcome to the Mission TV show. We're recording live here on the floor of the exhibit hall booth, or the booths, there's lots of booths here, in the exhibit hall of the 59th General Conference session right here in Atlanta, Georgia. And we're excited about this. There's a lot of people around here. You can hear the, the noise that's in the air, people looking around and checking out all the different ministries from around the world. And I love it because we're able to talk to people from all different parts of the world here representing their country in their home mission field. Today we're here with uh, Brother Daryl Sawyer, whom I've known for quite a while, and we've actually gone on a mission trip to before. Your first one, I believe, out of the country. As a matter of fact, yes. Yeah, and uh, you have a music ministry that has blessed thousands, including my family, extensively, uh, called Moses Song Ministries. Yes, that's right. What, why did you choose the name Moses Song? You know, it's interesting. My family and I at the time, we were praying and looking for a name, and one of my daughters just um, found that in the Bible, and she actually was Nicole. She came up with the thought Moses Song Ministries, and it sounded good. Everybody agreed on it, and we decided to go forward with it. That's great. And what is what has it become? What is the as far as meaning to you the name? You know, I think of Moses Song. When I think of Moses, I think of two things. Okay, victory and delivery, deliverance. And the song of Moses, you know, we're told that um, when Jesus returns, we are going to be able to sing that song, the song of Moses and the song of the Lamb. So deliverance in the sense of Moses and also victory over sin through Jesus Christ. Amen. That's what Amen. it means to me. So it's, it's grown probably in meaning over the years that you've had it. Absolutely. And what's the, what's the focus and intent and purpose of your of your songs, of your ministry? You know, it's interesting because um, initially we started out, my wife and I started out and, 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 and our children with the goal or the desire to just put um, appropriate Christian music into people's homes. Uh, it has become something bigger than that now. I feel as we're growing spiritually or as I've been studying more and getting a striving for a better understanding or a better experience of living the three angels messages well I want to make sure it's my desire that the songs reflect that encourage people also to have that experience not only to have it within themselves but also get that sh sharing sharing that experience with others let people know the joy of what it is to have Jesus in your heart and what he can do for you what he's promised to do what he's doing now and what he's going to do in the future. Yeah, and in sharing that, what's been your experience or why are you interested in other people sharing it? It's just church growth, is that what you're interested in? <laughs> yeah, no, it's, you know, when you, I remember when I first came to Jesus, Yeah. I couldn't talk about anything else. I was in the, I was in the, the, the show business industry and the people, you know, are in show business, many of them are averse to anything that has to do with Christianity. Right. And I was so excited about it that I would just go and talk to them and share and share. And I was oblivious sometimes to the fact that I was just, they, they didn't want to hear it. Right. Well, now it has come to be more of a, a deeper, more rich experience. I see God doing wonderful things in my life every day. I see people also that are striving to serve God as I travel, uh -huh. that the enemy is attacking people like he's never done before. And yes. so my desire, my goal, first of all, is to share what Jesus is doing for me. Right. Even in the midst of struggles, the Lord right. has told us to rejoice. Right. And we can do it in, 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 um, in every situation as we're working together, as we're singing. Uh -huh. We can be rejoicing in the Lord. And it's my desire to kind of share with people that even though you're under the gun right now, we can rejoice. We can, we can like, like, like Paul said, look at this as a light affliction right. and um, allow God to do the refining in our lives. I want to get that, I want to share that with people wherever I go. That's, that's the joy of having Jesus in your life. So what tools does he use for this refining? <laughs> Everything, I think. I mean, life. Life, as I said before, I have never seen, it seems like the heat has been turned up 
and I've never seen so many people going through such difficulty. I was on my way here today, and I got a phone call. Dear, dear friends that I love, the wife has been diagnosed with uh, third stage breast cancer. Wow. And my heart sank, but at the same time, I know this couple, and I know that they know Jesus, and I know that because they have the blessed hope, yeah. even though it's a, a difficult thing to go through, they know that Jesus, they're going to be victorious one way or the other. Okay, yeah. and that's when I want to have, help other people to experience, help right. other people to know that um, Jesus is real. Right. He's still working. He's working miracles. He's worked miracles in the past. He's still working miracles today, yeah. and he will do it for us. Yeah. Is it really fair that there are people that have never had that opportunity? I don't think it's fair. As a matter of fact, <laughs> funny that you said that you know recently I was on a mission trip and I have noticed that when I have given literature out oftentimes here in the United States I have found that sometimes people aren't interested well in this poor country that I was in I happened to be in Honduras recently okay. we were giving out steps to Christ mm -hmm. and people were hungry really people were coming up to us asking for the book and then we were, on a, we were on a ferry boat and we had handed it out and it was so much of a joy to see people actually sitting down and reading the books. Wow. I mean, and we were on it for about an hour and a half and people were, because they hadn't seen anything, you, they you hadn't did, heard. You didn't see the trash cans filled with this no, literature. No, no. And I said, <laughs> praise the Lord. It just, it just motivated me even, even though I didn't understand the language. Yeah. You yeah. know, you could read the language in their eyes. Right. You can see the hunger in their eyes for, for, for something different, something more. Right. And, and they, were, they were grabbing it. So you have been on a couple of mission trips. I have been, I think. <laughs> As a matter of fact, you were the one that motivated me to take the first one. I know you tried to get me to go for years, and I shied away from it. Because? Because of fear. I was afraid of a number of things. I was afraid of going over there and getting killed. I was yeah. afraid of going over there and getting a, disease. getting a disease, you know? Yeah. But the reality is it's not about me. It's not about us. It's about Jesus Christ. Right, right. So when you were over there, uh, I remember you saying something about uh, you were having to deal with things in your own life and character that you didn't know were there. I think every Christian yeah. should go on as many mission trips as possible. Yeah. Because I think what happens is, I know when I went on my first one, I came back again with that, that desire, that zeal, that, oh man, I want to get this out. But as time went by, you start to fall asleep again. Yeah. You start to get caught up in the stresses and the, and, and, and the, the, the trials of life. Right. And I believe also, when I say the enemy is turning up the heat, he doesn't care how he does it, as long as he distracts us long enough till Jesus throws down the censer. He want, wants to keep us occupied instead of focusing on taking, you know, there's a joy that I experience when I give to someone else, when I share Jesus with someone else. Yeah. I'm not thinking about myself. You forget about yourself. Right. And then you see that joy when the person takes a hold of it. There's nothing greater. There's nothing, I, I, I don't know how else to, ex, ex, I, I'm at a loss of words. It's addictive, isn't it? It is, it is. Now you did an evangelistic series in Honduras. I the did. The very first one. Yes. And, and when you saw those people light up when they were getting it and, you, and reading the Bibles. Yes. You know, I, that was an experience in itself also. And that's the other thing. We're so used to our lily white existence here. Everything <laughs> is so nice and clean. And you know, God tested me when I went there because everything isn't nice and clean over there. And people have to live in that filth. And at first when I got there, I found myself just, I couldn't wait to get home to wash. I was hesitant to touch people. It's like the, how often do they take a shower? Do they have a shower? They don't have showers. So I they, mean, many of them don't have showers. So they take like mud baths or something? You know, they'll, they're, at the, the they village that bath? I was in, the village that I was in, I didn't see any running water. They had electricity. 
um, yes, they take, they get water from like the creek or something like that, and uh -huh. they, they, they try and clean themselves, but it's so hot and humid, uh -huh. it doesn't take long. Yeah, about 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Before, you know, everything is just like right. out there. Yeah. And I found, at first, I just felt sticky. I felt like, and the Lord revealed to me. They wanted to hug you. They wanted to hug me. There was one little fella that every night when I would come to do the series, he would come at me with open arms. And I had to pray. I had to ask God. I remember the Lord showed me, first of all, Jesus wasn't afraid to touch the lepers. Right. Jesus wasn't thinking about himself. Right. His desire was to save those souls and to give them the love that he was there to share with them. Right. And that's how it's supposed to be with us. Yeah. And what the Lord was showing me is, you know, you call yourself a Christian, is the love really there? And I had to ask for it. But one thing I believe is when we ask, the Lord promises, ask and it shall be given. You can't fake it with God. Talk to him and say, Lord, I'm filthy, I'm dirty. Give me the love. Give me what I need to give these people so that they can see you and that the attention is not, a, it's not about me. Did you, find, the, huh? did you find that promise to be sure? I found it to be sure because by the time um, Midway through the evangelistic series, I found myself coming in there with my arms open, waiting for this smelly fella to come and put his <laughs> arms around me. I, it stopped being about me. There was another fella that wanted to carry my bag. I'd come in because I was doing a, um, a, key, a keynote presentation, <laughs> and he, my laptop is in there. And at first, he just wanted to, he wanted to be a part. He wanted to show, I'm happy that you're here, and I want to do something for you. So he would come and grab my bag, and at first I was like, oh my, I've yeah, got everything in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the Lord spoke to me and he said, trust, who's in control? What does this person need right now? He needs to know that you trust him to carry your bag. So it was, a, it was just a series of, of um, learning experiences. So those are things that you probably wouldn't have had to deal with if you'd stayed home. <laughs> no, I'd be, I'd be worried about paying the bills, yeah. you know? <laughs> Well, somebody said uh, the best defense is, the, is, is a good offense. Yes. And I found a statement by Ellen White that says the best defense against evil is when you're on the offense, when you're taking, when you're helping somebody else, when you're yes. teaching somebody else, when you're lifting somebody else's burden. Yes. And I think this is a theme that we find in Christ's life and, uh, and throughout the Gospels. Uh, and, and as a matter of fact, in Matthew 25, that's the defining that's the determining factor of whether you're a sheep or a goat. Yes. Is in as much as you've done it under one of the least of these, my brother. Now the least is somebody that you think the least of. And so the person that has no voice, the person in the third world country that you've never met, you think the least of them because they've never come across your vision. Yes. So um, in this walk, this experience in this growth entering into the life of Christ entering into the spirit of Christ which is the missionary spirit you have found um, satisfaction and joy how has that affected your your music your your uh, songwriting you know I was sitting just as this was back in February and I was sitting in this room and in the morning I would do a, um, a Bible study with the schools they had a, a, an ad um, uh, seventh day Adventist school there uh -huh. and I was asked to do like a week of prayer in the morning uh -huh. and I had an interpreter and then in the e throughout the day my interpreter had to go to his regular job I was just there and I felt like I was alone in this country uh -huh. trying to learn how to communicate uh -huh. and then I wouldn't see him again until the evening when it was time to do the evangelistic series and I started just talking to God and experiencing my aloneness in the midst of all these people and, you know, when I get a song, uh -huh. it's from God. It's through an inspiration. It's from an experience. Right. I, I sat down and I wrote another song, and it's called I'm Never Alone. And, and at some point, I'm, it's going to be on the next CD. But it was really wonderful because it, it, had, it, it came from that, that experience, experience of, of being, alone. being or thinking I was alone. And what Jesus is showing me is that you're not alone. I'm going to speak through you. Right. I'm going to help you. I'm going to show you things about yourself. And in, as you learn those things, it makes it easier for you to communicate those things to other people. Other people that are going through difficulties like you. Maybe 
maybe not the same difficulties, but you know what? Trial is trial. Yeah. Suffering is suffering. Right. Um, and the only answer is Jesus. Amen. So we, I, I, it, it has heightened my awareness. Uh -huh. I'm asking God, even though I don't like, I still, I'd be honest with you, I don't like to go to those places, but I like the response that I get when I see people taking hold of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I saw when we, when we did the evangelistic series, um, people got their Bibles, and as I would put the, the, the Bible, um, the scripture on the screen, they was, and it was up there for them to read, but they wanted to, we gave them Bibles and the and they, they wanted to, Bibles. they didn't have Bibles, and they wanted to read it for themselves. And that gave me so much joy. My presentation took so much longer because every verse, when I saw them flipping, you wait for them. I waited for them. Because yeah. I want them to see, ah, that's how it works for me. Right. When I'm reading something in God's Word and it comes alive, right. I wanted them to have that experience also. Amen. So that when we left, uh -huh. they'd still have, they'd know that the answer, the power is in the Word of God. Amen. Let me ask you one last question. Yeah. In the areas that you have done ministry here in the States as well as uh, overseas, Honduras, uh, your visit to Thailand and Cambodia, mm -hmm. do you have the impression that the Gospel Commission is completed? <laughs> Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Brothers and sisters, we've got work to do. We've got so much work to do. And I, again, I think I'm reminded that because things seem to be getting harder here, more than ever, this is the time to recognize, yeah, things are getting harder because the enemy is, is, is after us, but that is, his goal is to distract us. It should motivate us to get out more, drop right. what we're doing, get rid of the encumbrances, right. you know, that are holding us back here. Right. My house is up for sale and I don't know why it hasn't sold yet, but I'm selling it because I want to be free to do God's work. I don't want anything holding me back. I'm just passing through here. And I think that's something that we need to remember. Right. All of this stuff is going to burn. Yeah. You know, and that's right. if not now, when? When? Exactly. I like that. Yeah. I like that. Absolutely. You know, even the disciples, when when Jesus ascended to heaven, and they waited for ten days, the prayer and fasting, and the confessing of sins, the upper room, and the Holy Spirit was poured out with fire. Yes. And thousands were converted. It took even for them. It took persecution to get them out of That's Jerusalem. True. That's true. Because if persecution hadn't come, they would have just been happy, sit back, just stayed in Jerusalem. So if it took them, who was baptized by the Holy Spirit, persecution to go, how much more do we have to take the initiative or with that light, with that understanding of our human nature, to, to take that initiative to go voluntarily? That's right. Now, if, uh, would you prefer to go to Thailand and all these places voluntarily or by persecution? It's a little easier when it's voluntarily. It's voluntarily. <laughs> I prefer while the, while the opportunity is still there. Yeah. And the other thing is, yeah. I believe the trials are upon us now yeah. to help us get ready for the things that are going to be even right. more. We're right. getting a little bit of practice now. Yeah. You know, God is easily, I mean, gently Starting easing up. us into what's about to happen right and i say move with it yeah. move with it yeah. go with it Those because times. we're running out of time amen amen Daryl, how can uh, people uh, get in touch with uh, your ministry is there a website we have a website uh, moses song ministries uh, moses song.org okay so m-o-s-s -S, i'm sorry m-o-s-e-s-s-o-n-g -S -S so moses song, Moses song, one word, dot O-R-G. That's right. Uh, again, your songs have been a tremendous blessing in my personal walk with the Lord and in our families. Uh, if you're looking for some good music of meditation and uplifting your soul and come, drawing closer to Jesus, I strongly recommend Moses song, dot O-R-G, Moses song ministries. Daryl, it's been a pleasure having you here. Thank you for having me. God and thank you for joining us on another episode here of the Mission TV show, right here, recorded at, uh, at the showroom floor of the uh, General Conference, the 59th session of the General Conference of the Seventh Avenue Church. Thank you and God bless. Thank you. Thank you.